as Ross is stating here, Michigan pulls away as expected in the first or second quarter. Do you think JJ should finish out the game? Now, should is the, I think, the interesting word there. Um, it, do I think J.J. should finish out the game? I'm going to say not not in the first or second quarter. So, let, okay, so for sake of discussion, let's say, uh, <laughs> see, we got kind of, uh, Mal thinks that uh, J.J. should play the whole thing. Kate isn't beating Ohio State. I'm sorry. You, you've got a very valid point there. Um but what I would say is um, I, I think Cade should play at least into the third quarter. Like, I, I don't think it's it's crazy to have, let's say you're up 35 to nothing. I don't think it's crazy to have your starter in the game, you know, in the third quarter, um, especially with the type of aspirations that you have. Now, if you're telling me Cade's going to be in there to just literally hand the ball off every single down, then I, I would tell you then, sure, go ahead and put JJ in the game. But the, the, what I, would prefer not to happen. And, and Ross asked me what I think um, I would prefer not to have Cade throw 12 pass attempts in the first half. And then you, you know, pull him out because he's your starter, bring in JJ and somehow JJ throws the ball 20 times. Like that's, that's what I would prefer not to happen. Um, because I, and I, I get it right. JJ, his upside is incredible. Um, you know, from what we've seen in, in, in spots so far, he's athletic, he's got the arm, um, you know, he seems to understand the offense well, like, so I, I do understand all of that, but he, but to me, it seems clear from Jim Harbaugh's actions of Cade as the starter, um, he, Cade's not going to get benched, um, unless he has a, a, a nightmare of a game, which, I mean, you know, based on his track record, like he's, he, he's not going to have that game. Um, you know, a, a game where he throws three picks and, and it's just awful. Like I, you know, you just look at his track record. I mean, the guy, I think what, two weeks ago, I think Nebraska was the first time he threw an interception in his career. So he's not a, he's not a guy seemingly that just has absolute meltdowns. Um, and I, I think because of that, like he's, he's going to be the guy, like I think going into, you know, Thanksgiving weekend, Cade's going to be the starter against Ohio state. Um, and, and not to say that JJ won't play because, he, I mean, JJ has basically played in every single game. So I, I think he's going to play, but, um, you know, the, for me, I, uh, <laughs> yes, I do. I try to stay hydrated. Um, but for me, I, I just, you know, if, if someone's going to get the bulk of the passing attempts, I prefer it to be my starter because that's the guy that is going to take most of the reps. And he's the, the guy who's going to start against Michigan state and he's going to start against Northwestern. So, um, that that's all I would prefer now would happen. I, I that's probably what is going to happen is Kate will probably play the first half. And if it is a, a blowout where Michigan's, you know, beating them pretty bad, we'll probably see number nine out there for probably the whole entire half. Um, you know, maybe give him three and a half quarters and maybe Bowman, you know, we saw him a little bit against uh, Wisconsin, I believe. Um, but that's, you know, if it were me, if you're just going to hand it off all third quarter, then yeah, I'd say go ahead and, and sit Cade, but uh, just would love to not, you know, have a, a play call of 12 passes, you know, for the starter. And then you bring in the backup and he gets, you know, 20, 22 pass attempts. It's like that, you know, it, it just seems a little, a little off to me. So I'm going to play off some of the comments in the live chat and introduce this line of thinking. Okay. On one hand, Kate McNamara's done a fine job. He's done what's being asked of him to do as the leader of the offense. He's making the routine throws, maybe missing on some throws downfield. Sure, he's not perfect, but making the throws, limiting the mistakes, and they're winning games. They're 6-0. and yep. So what is the argument to bench him? Really nothing besides, hey, we got this five-star that we think we can take the top off the defense, but in terms of what's probably fair, right, good for team chemistry, um, shows trust and loyalty and all those, those aspects to Cade McNamara is to keep naming him as the starting quarterback week to week, as long as he's getting the job done. Okay. On the flip side, let's say Cade McNamara continues to play at the level that he's playing at. Uh -huh. And 
if Ohio State, which I think we would all agree is the one team with the ability to run away from everybody else, potentially, not that they have, but it could happen. But let's say Ohio State doesn't. And Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State are all just near dead even. Kate McNamara might be good enough to win the Big Ten championship. He may get them to the Big Ten championship game, then they should win that game. But if Ohio State takes off and is this point-a-minute team that you have to keep up with, then I could see a scenario in which maybe Cade McNamara is good enough to beat Michigan State because I think Michigan's better than Michigan State. And even though it's difficult to play in Happy Valley, Sean Clifford may not even be available for that game. And even if he is, Michigan's still capable of beating Penn State. So this is almost worst case scenario combined with best case scenario at the same time. Michigan's 11-0 and they've got a showdown with Ohio State, but Cade McNamara is not good enough to play that kind of game against Ohio State. They're down by three touchdowns at halftime, and they could have been playing J.J. McCarthy the entire time, who's not necessarily to the to the one uh, uh, comment that was made in the live chat, going to guarantee in any way that you're going to beat Ohio State, but he does have larger upside. There's no yeah. question about that. And I think since he's received meaningful snaps against decent opponents, he's shown us to a certain extent that his floor – probably isn't much lower, if at all, than Cade McNamara's. Yeah, it's it's such a difficult, it's a difficult spot on one hand, but on the other hand, like what you were mentioning, you know, when, when you're in that Ohio State game, I feel like you can still, there's no rule or anything that says that, hey, our offense is stalling, they're out to a track meet, like we need a spark. Great. Bring in JJ, you know, because the, and, and the interesting part is, is I, I think we can all agree that the ceiling of JJ is probably higher than Cade. Uh, I think that's clear. But one of the things that has sparked that really sparked the, oh, my goodness, JJ is the real deal was and I can't remember if it was Western or Northern Illinois, but it was the JJ scrambles, almost gets tackled um, and the throw across the field to Baldwin that, you know, Baldwin catches, scores a touchdown. That wasn't a, that, that play worked out well, but there's not a single quarterback coach in America that's going to tell you to make that throw. So the thing is, is, is what if that gets intercepted and taken, you know, back to the house? Like it, we're, we're at a whole different ball game as far as, you know, just kind of that initial spark. And then also too, like I said, like, you know, Cade's not going to have the meltdown of three interceptions. We don't know if JJ will, you know what I mean? Like we, like we, we have a much smaller track record and sample size of JJ than we do of Cade. So who's to say that, you know, an Ohio state defense doesn't, you know, run a couple schemes that confuses him and he throws, you know, he throws a pick, you know? So let's say, let's even say you're, you're, you do start JJ and he's, you're still 11 and 0 and you get to Ohio state you know, who's to say you're not in a 24 all game and you throw a pick six and, and, and that be the difference of the game. I mean, are, are you any better, you know, then, than you would be to, you know, to, to, to start, you know, uh, JJ now, like I I just, to me, I I think that um, I I think Cade, it's, it's tough to say, but I think Cade's a safer play. Um, But I, and I, and I, and I still am a firm believer that a lot of the, the, issues that you know us as fans have of Michigan's past game is I think part of that is the play calling like I, I think they overall don't do a great job like I, I think like Nebraska was really good um, as far as play calling but when you look at the six games that they've played I don't think they've done a great job of prioritizing the passing offense and just making sure that it gets in a rhythm um, you know with the with you know with Cade and his receivers so I'm I'm not a guy that thinks that JJ should start. Um, I honestly I think that ship has sailed. I think if it were to happen, it should have been really, um, you know, around that Washington game. Uh, I mean, you had you know Western Northern Illinois, like I you know it it, it just I I it's just tough to to make that switch mid season. I mean, 
you know, we've seen it before. Granted, uh, you know, with a, a team with national championship aspirations and Clemson. Um, but that was Trevor Lawrence, who everyone had pegged as the number one draft, the number one NFL draft pick by the time he stepped on the campus. I mean, I remember watching him in the spring game and the first time he threw the ball, I'm like, that guy's really good. So, I mean, I, I know people want it because, you know, JJ's probably going to be a little more exciting, you know, I, I, his upside's higher, but I just think that I, there's something to be said for a steady hand at quarterback, like to, you know, to, to have a guy that, you know, is not going to fold. He's not going to lose it. You know, he's not going to have the, the nuclear meltdowns of like fumbling the ball, you know, I, I, and I, and I think Jim Harbaugh likes that. And I, I think he takes comfort in that knowing what his guy can do.